Hey guys, Patrick Smith from AeroMediaPros.com. Today, I'm gonna to be doing an introduction of the brand new Ag Pro Scout that we're releasing for you guys. We're out here at an orange orchard, so it's a nice sized crop. We're gonna be able to plot and plan a mission with the data link, fly a waypoint mission, and then I'll show you some more features and advanced stuff that we can do with the Copter too. So let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you what's all included. As you'll see, it comes in the, the Phantom 2 case. This is already cut out, fits everything in nice and perfectly. Take out the brand new Phantom 2. You'll notice it has a nice wrap on it. It's the Ag Pro Scout. And you'll notice Ag Tech Talk on here. Ag Tech Talk is owned by Chad Colby. Be sure to check that website out if you're into the agriculture because he's always up to speed and he's always going over the latest and greatest stuff and showing a bunch of uses of what he's doing with the copters that we provide for him. So check that out. This is the H3 3D gimbal now. So it's a three axis gimbal for the GoPro. We have a 5.8 video transmitter to transmit the video signal from the GoPro down to the included monitor. And then we have a 2.4 data link system. That's what we're gonna be able to use with our iPad to do the waypoint missions, scout the crops, and stuff like that. So although I mentioned that it's the Ag Pro Scout, this also is a very good tool for search and rescue. Fire departments are using them from us now, and we're also got some police departments that are using these. It's a very good tool. We can pop up above buildings, we got the live video feed, and we can still do the waypoint navigation. So it's not just agriculture, it works very good for a lot of other applications. Next, it comes with the seven inch monitor. What I like about this monitor is it has a diversity system, meaning it's automatically gonna select between the two antennas on which one's getting the strongest signal strength. So based off of that, it's gonna use that antenna. We provide you guys with two different types of antennas. This one I'm putting on right now is called a clover leaf. It gives you really good 360 coverage. So as you're flying around yourself or in, in a circle, so to say, it's gonna give you good all around coverage. But once we start getting out further into the crop or we're going a far distance away from us, you wanna put on what's called the panel or patch antenna. This is a directional antenna and you want it facing towards the copter. What's nice is if you're, as you're watching your monitor, if it starts to get staticky, you can turn this towards the copter and you'll see the signal get stronger or weaker. So just simply turn it, bam, pin it, point it right at the copter and you're gonna get much further distance with this antenna versus the 360 coverage of the Cloverleaf. So we have that there. I brought my iPad and it fits in perfectly into the case. So we'll be using that for the waypoints in just a second. This is the 2.4 transceiver. So it's gonna transmit and receive the information to and from the copter. It's gonna to communicate to our iPad with the Bluetooth system. So the iPad will communicate to this and then this will communicate to your copter. You'll wanna use a three to six S LiPo to power your 2.4 transceiver. We include a three cell Phantom LiPo to power this for you. And we're also going to include a charger for this battery in the kit also. So you have everything that you need. So we'll use this to power that up. This is one of my favorites. It's the Futaba 14 SG. We do a custom wrap for you guys and we label all the switches. So you know what does what. If it's not labeled, if all it has is letters, that means that it's not activated so the switch isn't activated. It's a good rule of thumb to get into the habit of putting all your switches forward and away before you turn the radio on. This will make sure that everything's in the proper position. You can go ahead and turn the radio on and then go from there. Two main features of the 14SG is that one, it's gonna give you a longer range of communicating to the copter so you'll be able to fly further and still have communication. The other thing that I really like is it's gonna give us the voltage display right here on the radio screen so you'll always know the voltage of your copter. When this gets down to 11.1 volts, that's when you need to be back home and landing. So you're always gonna know when to land, when to come back home. It's an invaluable feature there. All right guys, so I got everything ready to go. I'm gonna plug in the data link system, connect to the iPad, connect the copter to the data link, get everything ready to go, and then we'll start doing some waypoint missions and showing you that system. First off, go ahead and plug your three cell LiPo into your transceiver, the 2.4. Make sure this is powered up because you don't want to go dead in the middle of a flight. This is gonna communicate through the Bluetooth to your iPad. And then from here, it'll go to your copter. If, if you really need to get some far distance, I'll mention that I've done this before, you can put this up on a big pole and use it to get better range. Right now, always have your antenna facing up. I'm just gonna place, place it right here. And then our Bluetooth, that's good to go. That'll communicate to the iPad. 
Now I'm going to turn the radio on, make sure all switches are forward and away. Radio's on. You notice I mounted the monitor to my transmitter. So this is good. Turn on your monitor. So before I fire the copter, you always want to make sure you have your GoPro installed. Don't forget the little C bracket to hold it in place and make sure your GoPro is powered on. We'll go ahead and turn this on. I got video, so video feed is good. So I got the monitor mounted to the transmitter. You'll notice we have our on-screen display. It's showing me my, my, my voltage right now. It's at 12.6. It's showing that it's trying to require satellites. So it gives us the information that we need while we're flying. We can always look at this to see the voltage. You press this home button, and it'll also give us the voltage of the copter, which also says 12.5 right here. All right, so I'm gonna walk this over. We'll take off from over here. Anytime before we start flying and doing waypoint missions, I always like to do an initial test flight and make sure the copter is operating correctly. So we got satellites, we're good to good, good to go. The voltage is good. So we'll go ahead and take off. So video is good. It is a little windy out here today, but the copter is definitely holding its GPS. All right guys, so we just finished the test flight. We know the copter's operating perfectly. Everything's good to go. So I'm gonna jump right into a nice simple waypoint mission for you. So I'm gonna click the ground station. That's gonna go ahead and pull up where we're at. You click the little crosshairs. This will locate our copter. And you click the crosshairs one more time and click on the little radar and that locates the iPad. So now we're good to go here. I'm gonna do a multiple waypoint mission. So I'm gonna click the, you have a single waypoint there. We're gonna click on the multiple waypoints. And now wherever I touch, it's gonna to start placing points for us. So I'll go point one right here. I'm gonna go point two, point three, point four, and then number five, I'll bring right close to home. Now we can click on each individual waypoint and change the height and the speed. So I'll put this at 45. Speed, I'm gonna to put to seven. And then here we can do stop turn, a bank turn, which will hit the point and curve it a little bit, or an adaptive turn, which will do a nice sweeping motion. It'll usually cut the corner off, so make sure you don't have anything in the way. I'm gonna do stop and turns on this mission. Hit done. So we're good there. Rather than do one each individual waypoint, you can also go ahead and click select all. This is what I like to do. And then you edit all those waypoints at the same time. So I'm gonna put it to 45 meters. Speed, I'm gonna to put to seven. Heading, you can change it which way you want the copter facing. Hover time at each waypoint, how long we want it to stop and hover if we're doing stop and turns, which I'll do. And I'll do three seconds. We're gonna do stop and turn. We're good to go. We hit done, and now we're ready to take off. Before we take off, make sure that your switch GPS is in the GPS attitude. mode. All right, so once we have all of our waypoint, height, speed, everything dialed in, we can go ahead and click OK. It's a very important screen because it shows you each of your waypoints, the speed and the climb rate altitude that you got it set at. So double check this. If you forgot one, maybe you had one at seven meters. So we go 45, 45, seven, it go down and hit a tree. So make sure that you check all that stuff. We are good to go. Now you'll notice this is something I like, the flight time exceeded. This we can change. So if you know your copter's flight time, let's say it's 20 minutes, we can set this to like 16 minutes, 17 minutes. So when it gets out there and it hits that time limit, it'll come home and land. I'm gonna set this to 16. We're good there, done. Vertical speed, I'm gonna put that at two. That's good. 
and then loop. If we have the loop on, it's going to continuously run its waypoint mission until we pause it or we take control from the radio. So we're good to go. Everything's verified. To take off, make sure you have this in the GPS mode and put your throttle stick to half. We're good there. Now we can click the go button and the copter's going to take off and it'll start its mission. Waypoints. We're going to do stop and turns. So it's going to stop there for about three seconds. It'll turn and it'll go to its next waypoint. We can also control the camera from the Futaba and we still have power and control of that. Now it's heading off to its second waypoint. Altitude still looks good. Now if for some reason we were flying right now and maybe we didn't account for an uphill and so it was flying closer and closer to the ground, what we could do is pause the mission, hit, simply hit pause. Hovering. This is gonna put it into a hover mode. Now we can switch to single waypoint or double waypoint, or we single can simply keep point. going. Right now I'm gonna keep going and let it finish its mission, so I hit the play, and we're gonna go right back into the waypoint mission. When it gets closer to home, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it, and then regain control, show you how we do that. All right, so let's say I'm in the middle of a flight and maybe I notice the battery's getting low, or I'm about to run into something that I didn't plan for. Simply hit the pause button. This is gonna put the copter into a hover state of exactly where it stopped. Now we have manual control. We're gonna to switch to single waypoint mode. I can hit the waypoint on where I want it to come to. So I'll put it right there. Keep my altitude at 54.7. I'm gonna change that to 40. Done. Change the speed to 10 because I want it back fast hit done. Now I hit go and the copter is going to come right back to us. So that's one way that we can regain control while we're in the middle of a waypoint mission. The second way is we can pause it wherever it's at. I can then click the come home button. I'm going to click the edit go home spot. We'll put the altitude that we want it to come home to. I'm going to bring this to 30. Done. Home point set. Hit go. And now it's going to come back home. So once it gets over us, I'm going to go ahead and show you the final way to regain control. And that is to take it from GPS into attitude mode. Go all the way down into attitude mode and that's going to be able to regain control and we have the Futaba that we're flying it with. So we can either wait for it to land, it's right over the home point right now. So I am going to go to attitude mode. Make sure your throttle stick is at least half because we don't want to go to attitude and just drop. So that throttle stick is good. Attitude mode, I have control of it. And now I can fly it around, do what I want with it, and land. So I'll bring it in for landing. So that right there was a quick introduction, a simple waypoint mission, and a demonstration of the Ag Pro Scout. Keep watching, I'm gonna do another tutorial on that one. We'll go into depth and start getting into some more advanced features and how to do some more advanced waypoint flying and navigation. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope you like it. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, and I'll keep putting these out. See you next time.